Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of The Bear Share Show. This is your host, Andre Matoyer. And today, I want you to influence me, or at least that's the idea of today's episode, where we are going to talk about the idea of social media and social media influencers. I can tell you right now, I know a little bit about it, but I don't know a ton. But lucky for me, I have a friend who knows quite a bit about that. Who's your friend? Who's the friend? That's a great question. You know someone that does that? I, I may be recently. You should have right? him on your podcast. <laughs> Sounds like a great idea. Yeah, you should do that. Um, so actually, I have a friend who um, knows quite a bit about this, and he was kind enough to join me on today's episode, and that is the hilarious Mr. Nathan Pilot. That Nathan, is how are you me. Today? I'm doing super well. Um, thank you for having me on your show. Yeah. The Bear Share Show. The Bear Share Show, where we I, are bears we just, and we're sharing about life. I just came up with this intro off camera, or off, yeah. off mic. I, I'm going to, I'll play with that some more. Yeah. And we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Maybe I could send you another one with better, better, better uh, like with some beats. instruments. Yeah. Like, but, yeah. yeah. So, um, so uh, we have mutual friends, and we got to hang out more recently. Um, yes. And I learned something that you were – well, why don't you explain? What do you do for a living? Um, I do influencer work. Yeah, so you internet. are a social media influencer, right? right? So I didn't even and I know that – I do music too, but we're not talking about that right today. Today we're talking about influencing. The influencing stuff. Yeah. You, can, you, can, you can mention it though. But like, I'll maybe at the end. I, I just didn't even know – that that can really be a career. Like I knew that was for some people, but like I didn't know that you could actually do that. You know, it's like, actually a lot easier than you think. Like yeah. any, not like pretty much. I would say anyone could do it. It just like you have to figure out a niche and a way to make money. Sure. So so you're a social media influencer. So how would you sum up like in a couple words or a sentence like what you do for work? Like besides um, just social media. I live people's vicarious life. So I live a life that people can like watch and be entertained by and live their and live yeah. vicariously through you. So like when people are on the toilet or they're about to go to sleep and they're scrolling through their phone, they want to be entertained and I give them that entertainment. You give them their two minute poop entertainment. Yeah. Okay. That's, I guess that makes sense. Right. Um, so with social media, there's so many different platforms, you know, you've got like TikTok and YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. Um, I don't even know what else is out there. There's a Snapchat, Twitch, I don't know. Snapchat, right? So, like, how does trailer. how does that industry even work? So, like, how does one do that? Because I know a lot of people have social media, but what's the difference between someone who like has it and uses it for fun or has followers versus someone who like what classifies them to that next level? I guess is it influencer? Um, I guess it. Well, like even the word influencer, I don't love because it's like, what are you influencing? I like the word like content creator, but social media influencer is the, is the, term, the term that okay. people so that's has the been coined okay. um, for the job. So how does it work? But, uh, and pretty much personal, like ads on the internet mm -hmm. are a lot more personalized. Like when someone is going to spend a few million bucks on a Super Bowl ad, they're going to get all these type, different types of demographics that they don't necessarily like they're not going to be able to advertise specifically that person, but because of cookies and caches and, and just like the fact that like content that I put out, like maybe like as an influencer, the content I put, put out is so specific. So I have a specific demographic and I'm able to see my analytics of like my age, my region, okay. my gender, you know, all that stuff. So they read your audience basically. And then they okay. advertise to them based on. Those so advertisers come to you to promote right. their stuff based on your... And it's analytics. a lot more worthwhile than traditional advertising. Okay. And everyone's moving to internet advertising because it's yeah. a lot more streamlined. Okay. So you are you get paid off this, right? So that's your living. So you get paid right. off of the advertisement money that comes in. Right. And okay. I would say to be considered like... Like what I would consider a social media influencer would be someone who at least does it part-time, if not full-time. Um, okay. So they're like you. I wouldn't consider someone an influencer if they're not making any money okay. off of it. If okay. you're able to like, support yourself doing it, then sure, that's your job. It's like if I okay. wanted to be a basketball player, I might be on a team, um, but I'm not a pro basketball player because I'm not making okay. my income it. off that. Okay, got it. That makes sense. So that's so you're, like you're like a pro social media user, basically. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, you talked to me a little bit about this, you know, behind the scenes before we did this episode, but like, what made you want to do this? Because this is, it's a lot putting yourself out there. Yeah. And I applaud you for that because it's hard. You know, not, one, not everyone's going to like what you make, but some people might, but like, you know, when did you decide that you want to do this? You know, um, when I was in sixth grade, okay. maybe when I was in like 
fourth or fifth grade. Yeah. I started watching a lot of who this person's kind of canceled now, but I started watching a lot of Shane Dawson and Brady Louise Taylor and uh, Raylan Johnson, and they're all YouTubers. Yeah. Uh, Smosh. Um, so this is what you're younger than me. I don't know any of these yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, totally I'm fine. Lie. Okay. Yeah. yeah I don't that's know totally fine. any of these people um, so, so I watched all these people, like, if some people are really hip to the YouTube culture and stuff, like I used to watch O2L and just all these, all these different people, Andrew Russett. Okay. Um, and I was definitely not, uh, in with the popular group in middle school. I was definitely much an outcast. Okay. Um, so I, my camera was my best friend and my editing software, iMovie was my best friend. Okay. And I would watch these YouTubers and they made me feel like they were my friends. Like the YouTubers part of like the vicarious thing is yeah. also like they're very intimate with their audience and so you really feel like you get to know them because you really do you actually do like really get to, to know them for the okay. most part um and so for me that got me through a lot of hard stuff having that support system of youtubers to watch that that made me like feel like i they were my friend got it in middle school when i didn't have friends yeah and that's interesting i didn't grow up with youtube because it started coming out when i was an adult really mm -hmm. so it's interesting that to see like your perspective of it growing up with it as, as a kid. Have you seen the movie, The Mitchells versus uh, the Robots or something? I have not. It's on Netflix. You need to watch it because the main character reminds me exactly of your story. Oh, okay. Where she like didn't really find her people, but she made a bunch of movies and content. Yeah. So you've always been an artist. So you express yourself through, through art. art and that art was through like videos mm -hmm. and, okay, and, and music. Like fan made and, music videos yeah, and music. Okay. And a lot of people are doing it online, right? So you felt yeah. that that was a safe place for you to be yourself. Right. Which is interesting because, like, again, that's putting yourself out there. So that can be really challenging. Um, what have you learned from this, really? Um, like, what are some things that you've come out of it with? I've definitely learned uh, in the past few years. So being in L.A., um, I'm 25 that's where you live now, right? now. Yeah, I, okay. I moved there when I was about 21. And from my experiences in L.A., I've learned that well, the first thing I learned was that famous people are not always the best. That's a shame. But um, I've heard that before. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's an LA shame. thing. Um, also, uh, just like a job is a job. You just do your job. And, and um, you know, I've learned how to network well, how mm -hmm. to run business, how to read a contract and know if like, that's a business huge. is trying to that's, screw me that's over. That's huge, yeah. Um, how to market myself and how to get myself to the right eyes and how to learn algorithms and like it's a lot of math actually which is i'm really terrible at math but okay i do that is part of it and like hold on so with the math like do you get the demographics like a print out of it and then you kind of analyze the data so you you is? can look at your analytics on all your different platforms okay. my instagram and youtube platform is 18 to 24 and my okay. tiktok platform is 13 to 17. Okay. And so my content's a little bit different on each platform. I see, because you have a different audience mm -hmm. platform. So, yeah, and I get that. I get analytics for the show, actually, too. It's a, yeah. it's a relatively new show, The Bear Share Show, but I get analytics The Bear for it. Share Show. Right? Okay. Interesting. Did you go to LA initially to do this? Like, was that your dream? Like, I want to be a social media influencer. I'm going to go to LA because, like, that's where things are happening. I was in business school um, in Virginia, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I was just like, oh, I just, I don't know do business somewhere. Okay. And, uh, community college or I was at, uh, I was at like a pretty big university or like not pretty, like a good university. Okay. Size in, the DC, in, Washington, in uh, right? Virginia. That's where, that's where you're from. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I got invited to this meet and greet for musically this app that used to be musically now it's TikTok. Um, oh, okay. I had about 250,000 followers on the platform and it was the first meet and greet ever it was happening in LA I got invited to it and I was I was like this is dumb I don't even do this anymore like I only did it as a fad for like two months in like a year before that and then it quit okay but I was verified on the platform I had 250k wow so they were like come be at this meet and greet meet fans and I was like okay did they fine. fly you out there no but you, they, okay yeah but I was like I looked at my roommate and I was like do you like in our small dorm yeah and I'm like do you want to go to LA well we maybe we'll just ditch this thing we won't even go like well it's like you know but like let's go to LA he was like, okay, sure. Well, he he dropped out because he didn't have enough money last okay. minute. So I, I made some friends through the app, had the best three days of my life in LA making, I made like 40 videos in three days. Wow. And it was the most fun I've ever had ever. Like I was like, wow, I'm surrounded by all these people that do the same thing I right, do. Right. I've never ever experienced it before. Like I have to like move here. So six months later, um, I moved to LA. Okay. So you felt inspired by the place yeah. after that experience, which makes sense. I mean, LA is the place where 
creators go. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially for film and media because Hollywood and all that. Yeah. But it is a tough place. It is. It's really tough. Like, I have friends that it's live like the there worst who sometimes. tell me all the highs and lows about it. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, at least it's crazy. Jungle. Especially the industry. Yeah. The industry is, like, crazy. And, like, sometimes I'll, like, tell people things about the industry when they're not, like, in the industry. And they, they don't even really believe me, I feel like, most of the time. <laughs> Because well, you it, know more really people stupid. over the past few years, so you get to see more behind the scenes. Yeah, it's super Based weird. Based on the stories you've told me, I feel like you know more behind the scenes than most people, so it's Pro- interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's everyone, like, it's just, it's kind of like a high school. It's like there's... Oh, all, that's not good, though. Yeah, like, you know everything about everyone because there's only so many of you. Okay. Everyone knows everyone. Like, you're, like, I'm only ever one person away from every single person in yeah. Hollywood. It's kind of like the bear community sometimes. Yeah. Um, with hundred percent with social media and, and influencers, I, there's a lot of stereotypes I hear about it. Like I know some people kind of roll their eyes when they hear like oh, social yeah. media influencers, sometimes but then I some do. people want to be you because they're like, oh, how fun and glamorous, right? And sometimes it's both. They're like annoyed and jealous. Well, I think part of the annoyance comes from being jealous because they're like, yeah. I'm fucking working in this office job or whatever, and I wish I was on. I wish I was in roll, this mansion like, or whatever. Right? Yeah, like, rolling around on like four wheelers and on the beach. In yeah, Venice or whatever. Yeah, no, I get that it. Is, so I, I've been doing that this past week. <laughs> Screw you. That's awesome. Yeah, but like, okay, so when it comes to that, so first of all, is I think people need to understand that. Yes, it seems glamorous to be a social media person, but it takes a lot of work. Right. It's not just all so beaches and parties. So, right? like, I guess stereotypes, and then we'll get into kind of, like, what it's actually like. Sure. But the stereotypes um, that I think can be completely accurate, I think they're more so accurate than not. Oh, they are. Would be, like, that influencers are just these, like, punk kids running around L.A. <laughs> causing a ruckus, and they, like, have no respect for anyone. And they think they're the best. The influencers in the industry, like, my friend's a traditional media actress. She's been doing it for, like, 20 years. Okay. And she always told me that, like, the first um, experience she had with an influencer was at a red carpet event. He came up and threw a phone at her face and threw a sticker uh, on her forehead and went, You just got candy canned. Which, he, that's his, like, name. Yeah. And she was like, excuse, excuse me? Like, what? Who is yeah. this person? And, like, Why are they touching That's me? a lot of influencers. They're, they just they're, don't care. They they're, just do like, whatever. a lot of influencers are sociopaths because they don't have empathy. Like, and that's a good industry for, it's a good industry for sociopaths. But a lot of people in the industry don't even respect influencers because, for good reasons. Um, like, they're reckless. Like, I, I found out because I was at an influencer party that if your party, if you shut down a whole street because there's too many cars and a helicopter has to shut down your party, it's $15,000 fine. And I only know that because it was a stupid influencer party where they didn't care. And they had enough money to cover Yeah, and they're like, That's I don't care. That's insane. And so it's like, it's, and it's disrespectful <laughs> to their neighbors. Yeah, you know, but they don't care. But they don't care. And so... Does that, that kind of ruin the brand a little bit? In a, it, yeah, it, you know it, what I mean? it can be like unfortunate, but it's new, you know? Yeah. Things will happen, like even real celebrities don't think of themselves as highly I've found as influencers think of themselves. So like I have a few million followers, so I'm really important. Yeah. It's like, girl, you are not Ariana Grande and Ariana Grande doesn't even act like this. Like, right. <laughs> what are yeah, you doing? Yeah. Well, I, I can see it being an ego trip, but not everyone's like that. Sure. But and I, I, can I, see I don't it like being to be around those trip, people. For sure. Okay. Well, that's good. And it actually helps my brand and my friend's brands because there's less, um, people in the industry, like people in the industry want to work with influencers. They need to. But um, they they don't want to work with assholes. Absolutely. So they end up working with me because I'm nice and I have the following. Yeah, and you're smart. Because yeah. You read the contract and you. And I'm also like, not like 19 years old. I, w- I was a little reckless when I first went to LA. I was 21, sure, sure. 22. You're, yeah, you're still a kid, but yeah, you're still like I, I know. a baby in the world. Yeah, you're in like mid 20s. Yeah. But like, I get what you're saying. So okay, um, that actually that, yeah that that's both. That's great. Um, when it comes to the business, tell me a little bit more behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, um, there's a lot. Every so the thing that stinks about being an influencer is that you there's not really ever a line on when you're working and when you're not. Everything's Always kind of like fun work at the same time. Okay. Like you could be going to a music festival, but you're working it because you got sent there and you're getting paid to go, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. You know that's amazing. But you do have responsibilities. So yeah. It's like so, like you can't get too fucked up. Like you gotta, yeah. you gotta post. You gotta yeah. make a whole vlog right. and edit it and have it up the next morning. Right. So, so it's like enjoy the party, all-nighter. but also make sure that you are getting what we need you and what we're paying you to get. Right. Otherwise, that again hurts your brand. Exactly. Sure. And they're not gonna okay. have you back. And they're and also everyone talks. 
So you're not going to get oh. t- you're not going to get brand deals from any of this person's friend companies because that, they were like he was not reliable. Yeah, like don't sh- put, put bring him to your events. Okay. Um, and also sometimes okay. it's hard because you work with your friends, and sometimes you just work with people, and online you're like, like people want you to be friends with the people you're working with, but okay. that's not always the case because. You just sometimes you're just collaborating with people, and then you end up finding out later as you like get to know them a little more. Like, wow, this person is not like that great. Like, okay, so but do you, do you find that you compete with friends sometimes too? Sadly, I guess like we all kind of compete with each other in a okay. way. But I don't. No, I wouldn't use the word compete because like I think there's enough room for everyone. Okay, so I don't think there's other? like yeah. I think okay. like we kind of live in a society now because of the internet, like where everyone's famous. And I or think there's, candy. yeah, get their 15 minutes of fame or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. it's just like, so in a way, like almost like no one's famous though, because of like social media, but like, I just don't think there's, there's like everyone's million is out there. Like everyone has like, like something that they do that like a million people would be interested in and like they, you can okay. market that somehow, like whatever that is, if it's like a clothing thing yeah. if it's like stickers it could be like you make dolls out of like this like specific velvet fabric sure. you know and people are like i love it i want to like yeah. you know anything that you might think is weird is probably something unique for an audience yeah exactly okay. uh, that yeah that's that's super cool so um you've worked with a lot of different people mm-hmm. in the industry is there someone that you really want to work with that you've met that you do like i know you said there's a lot of people that you don't but like is there someone that you do like that um, you love to work with or collab with okay so like one person that i've hung out with a few times that i would totally work with like like i'm, I'm thinking more realistic like not someone i haven't met or something because there's like a million people i want to work with that i haven't sure. met yeah. but out of people i've met i probably want to work with bella thorne she gets a bad rap um, okay. but what I is she big on TikTok, YouTube? Uh, she was on a she was a Disney child star. Oh, okay. um, and then now she's like uh, she makes music and she's in movies. Okay, um, so she's like, she has, like everything. Okay. Yeah, she okay. like she did had a whole scandal last year because she um, did it. She made two million dollars a day uh, in Excuse off me. her OnlyFans, but oh, it wasn't she's a only... nude. Oh, okay. oh, and okay. she was like saying like it's a nude, it's a nude. Unlock it, it's two hundred dollars. But it was and she made two million dollars that day off of it. And, um, and like uh, broke OnlyFans and everyone was really pissed. Yeah, because she didn't deliver what she promised. Yeah. That's just bad marketing. You yeah. can't do that. But I was feeling like, I was feeling like you just scammed like all, like the whole thing is like the, like scamming men who just want to, who are horny. I yeah. just feel like, I'm like, I'm here for it. Right. Like low key. But also people were really upset. So I get it. But you do want to work with her. But I want to work with her. Yeah. Because she's really sweet. Um, we have similar aesthetics. Okay. And she throws the best Coachella parties. Okay. Like the best I've ever been to. And so I, but also she's just like, she knows how to party. She's a nice person. Um, and I think she's really creative and she's about her business. And you have similar styles. Yeah. And what you find interesting and what you would work together well with. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's your next big project like in the immediate future? Um, that you're working on that you would like to get out maybe before the end of 2021? Okay. Uh, so I have this album I'm working on. It's called Pie Land. Because you do music name. too, yeah, and that's what you post a lot on Instagram. Instagram, and, and then and okay. then my other platforms, I don't really post about music as much. Like TikTok is mostly like funny comedy videos and comedy stuff. Okay, yeah, like funny videos mm-hmm. with your friends. I've seen those. Yeah, okay. Because so your Instagram is where you post your music videos. More and then so, yeah. People can find it and listen to it on like Spotify, and mm-hmm. Apple Music, okay. and all the anywhere you listen to music. Yeah. Um, but I wanna, I really wanna release that album this year. I just like the more I like look at it, like I, I'm such. I never thought I'd be like this, but I'm such a perfectionist with music to where it's, I've been working on this album for two years and I think I'm just going to end up redoing it all. Like I, that's where I'm, I like decide this week, I think I'm just going to redo the whole thing. Well, remember nothing is ever perfect. I know. You just have to just, and, and you I, know that you're a content Music creator. videos are so expensive too. I yeah. produced my, all my own music videos and I want six of them for this album and each one's probably going to cost me somewhere like 10 K. And so I need to somehow find that somehow. I don't know is how I'm coming out of your that. pocket or yeah. is that an investor? No, that's, that's coming out of my pocket for sure. If I'm Jesus. lucky though, I could maybe like try and finesse like a sponsorship for each music video. But I that would say takes that. a lot of work and time, but and then you have to feature them in work. the video or something. Some right. Point. Like okay. at some point there's like a talking part. I'm like, go download this app. So great. Oh my God. Yeah. You it's know? X app X, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a lot. It's a lot. And, obviously, and I'm doing it all myself. I don't have like I have a team, but they don't help me with stuff like this. Well, you have like someone who helps you with the music side. Yeah, I have a publicist, um, yeah. a manager, an assistant, and I have um, a comp- a label thing. Okay. So that's I mean that's all big. That's yeah more than what most people have. 
which yeah. is what helps get your stuff out there, which is that's awesome. So, all right, a lot of people. I used to teach high school, and mm-hmm. a lot of my former students were like, oh, I want to do this. I want to be like a you know, a uh, social media influencer and stuff. I there, it takes a lot of work. You have to hustle because you, you did all to... that work in, in networking. But like, yeah. what would advice would you give yourself in the past, or if you were just starting out, or like, what advice could you give to someone who was just starting out? Oh my gosh. Okay. So the this? the first thing that comes to my mind, it sounds this is gonna sound so unhelpful, but actually, it's like helped me the most. Um, I'm such an extrovert. So if you're an extrovert and you're young and you like to party. And you're in LA, like, I moved to LA when I was 21, so I was, like, freshly, like, able to, like, drink. That was a risk, though. It was a risk, oh, for sure. Not everyone's comfortable with doing that. But I I went to LA when I was 21, and I, all I did was, like, party for two years. And I met every single person in those two years. Now, like, everywhere I go in LA, people are always like, Nathan, how do you know, like, that person? Like, like I'm like, oh, because I, I partied with them in, like, this time, at this time, at this time. Right. So your partying was networking? I, I, yeah, I used to, <laughs> I used to always say my... I did my best networking when I was drunk. I got so many brand deals and sponsorships, like just from going to parties and being just like, from being drunk. yourself. And, like, and I'm a I'm a heavyweight too, so I would like try and out drink people, and oh. then they'd be like, "Whoa, that's so cool! You can out drink me. Here's some money." Oh my god, LA is so <laughs> LA is like weird. Weird. Like, you can out party me. Oh my gosh, you must be like that's awesome. such a different world. Yeah, that, that blows my mind. But that honestly probably was one of the best things that I did. I didn't mean to. I was just doing it naturally. But what about I, introverts? Um, are they going to struggle a little bit? I mean, oh, introverts are going to struggle. Okay, yeah, unfortunately. Okay, but the biggest thing is networking. Then, really. networking is the biggest thing because okay. um, in LA, like everything, like whatever you need, there's an expert in that field. Like, so if you need like a dancer or a, a like a I don't know, like a PA, or if you need a videographer, or okay. you need someone who's good at publicity or you need a venue for something, uh, there's someone who like has that. And the more people you know, the more people you, oh, I need, a, I need a dog for this one shot. And we also need a bar scene venue for this thing. Also my client or my friend wants to throw this thing and they need 10 models. And you could just, if you have all those numbers in your phone, you can just oh text gosh. them and then and it's get easy. what you need. Yeah, and it's oh just quick, it takes like an hour. Well, for you, because you built that up. Right. But that would be something that someone new would have to really work at. Right. And take time. And I don't think people think about that. They just go, oh, mm-hmm. I have the followers. That should be enough. Right. I get the clicks. I get the likes. But that doesn't take you to that next level of actually being an influencer, which then therefore will attract the advertisers to pay you to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's... that's. And you have to exactly. know your worth. Like one thing, another thing I really wish I knew when I was younger was my worth. My first brand deal I took for $40. And I was like hyped that I was getting forty dollars sure. to post about this like game app. It was actually for this app called um, Piano Tiles, and it was like a it was like a, just a video like a fun little app that you played. Um, and yeah, and like I was getting maybe like I don't know how many views I was getting, but I had about two hundred fifty thousand followers when that happened, and I should have probably been getting at least like one hundred fifty a post for the for the thing. Um, but now like. Like the CPM of TikTok um, is about every uh, 10, 100,000 views is about $1,000 on average. So if, if you're averaging 3 million views a video, you would you should be getting paid 30 grand for a Holy one brand deal. Holy shit. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. That's so much. Yeah. It's a, yeah. And that's all passive income because you're not actually do, like, yeah, but you they're make getting, a video, it's worth but, it though. Because yeah. think about how much money, how much advertising revenue they're getting. So if I have a product and I want some people to buy my product, yeah. if I get 3 million people to see it, a lot of those people are going to buy the product. Especially if I have a lot of money, I can get like, like a bunch of people to post about it over the course of like three months. And so now, like, because people don't usually buy things the first time they hear about it, they buy it the third time they hear about it. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So, it if, like, an advertising thing. Yeah. So, okay. if people, if you, they just hear, oh, Bang Energy, Bang Energy, Bang Energy, which I've done a deal with them, they were my biggest deal. I, I like Bang Energy, but they, like, you hear it over and over and over again, and like now it's in every like Seven Eleven. And now you're like, fine, I'll try a Bang Energy. Where can I get a Bang Energy? Right. Oh, and 7-11. Bang Energy used to not be big years ago. I had to deal with them on Musically before it was TikTok. And and they all of their money they put into influencers. They actually didn't like put like any other really money anywhere else. They just put into influencer marketing, and now they're uh, like a household energy drink name. Wow. Yeah. That's this is a, actually that's a great example of how everything works. Yeah. That's huge. And influencer marketing is way stronger than traditional marketing. 
or just internet marketing. E-commerce is, is like the future. It's the internet. You know, everyone's on their phone. Yeah. And, and ads are so personalized now. Everyone's always like, oh, like, I just mentioned this thing once and now I'm getting ads, ads for it. Ads for like suitcases and that's, or something. that's how yeah. it like works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you mentioned like you know your contracts and stuff. So did you – is that something you learned by yourself or do you have a lawyer that helps you with that? Um, I used to have a manager that would help me with – that helped me learn stuff like that okay. originally. Um, and then I have two different lawyers that I – if a contract's over $1,000, I always have my lawyer look at okay, it. Okay, just to make sure. And I, and I pay them their fee okay. for looking at contracts. But, okay. um, but yeah, like I've learned – I picked up things, uh, but – but like I'm still not a lawyer, so right. Yeah. But like but you know your worth now. I think because right. like I know you how said to, when a company's trying to screw me over. Yeah, I wouldn't know that. I would be so grateful to be like, oh my gosh, like I'm getting something. Yeah, you know, like because um, I'm looking for more advertisements for my show. I just started. I obviously do one for Anchor that I play every time I, I load a, a new video. But I don't know how to get more sponsors. It just takes time. But, like, I would just be so excited to get anyone's attention. I wouldn't know if they're under or overpaying me. You know? Right. So that's something that... And that comes from trial and error. Okay. You know, and it's, it's like, comes with, like, networking, too. Yeah. When you have people Absolutely. that you can, like, bounce ideas off of or, like, oh, this is how much you got paid for this. Oh, so, like, I'm... Uh, this. Maybe I, I should be getting paid this. Okay. Because your friend got paid something similar. Yeah. You have similar demographics and followers. Right. You can kind of it's match like, each oh, other. Oh, well, you get, like, this many views of things. Yeah. I might not get that many. Or maybe I get more. So I should, like, uh, statistically or percentage-wise be yeah. making this much more or less. All right. Question for you. Where do you see social media going in the future? Just in general. Like, um, where's, what would be the next level for influencers that you think is coming up? So I feel like... The next decade uh, or something? I think unionizing. Um, a lot of unions are oh. starting to get into the social media space. And I think there's going to be a lot more rules um, and genres of things. Just okay. the way TV is put into... Like, you know that... Like, a lot of times, influencers... Um, one thing that a lot of people get away with right now that I don't think will happen forever is the line of the draw, blurring the line of reality and fiction. Um, I've, you know, I've done that too. I've, I've had things that were potentially like, I never said they were like real, but like, I kind of, I never said they weren't. Um, okay. and you blur the line, but eventually I think there'll be genres where like legally you have to be like, Hey, this is not real. Like this is like reality TV or this is like, okay. now this is like a music thing. Fiction. This is more drama. This is more comedy. Okay. And you're, there's going to be more lanes that are a little bit more defined. Um, also even um since the since things started now influencers have to hashtag ad or hashtag sponsored on paid posts so that people oh. don't think that it's um just like oh they just really like it. they're actually getting paid to say they like it. i see that on review videos too because yeah. people don't want to see hashtag sponsored on a review video because they already know it's going to be biased or something right. yeah okay and it gives people more information like okay this is a biased thing because they're getting paid for it yeah and I think that's helpful, too, for advertisers. They can go to that certain lane and be like, all right, these people are all musically. Right. Um, so I, I'm going to, you know, I'm a guitar salesperson. I want to target music people. So I can right. go to them. Instead of hunting for all these social media people, they can go to the right ones right away. Right. That's helpful. Um, did you notice a change with COVID? Oh, with, for sure. With social media? Like yeah, before everything and after? went to Zoom. You couldn't collaborate with anyone. Fun okay. things weren't happening. The whole thing with influencers is we're supposed to have this like glamorous life and we post the highlight reel. And when there's no highlights to post, like it's Everything's boring. Everything's closed. And everyone, yeah. everyone was depressed. Yeah. Even the brands were depressed. And then no one wanted to make a budget for things because everything was so uncertain. So no money. Like it was really hard to make money. Um, for everybody. For everyone. It was a dip. Yeah, okay. and like the the creativity wasn't happening. Okay. Because you have to be happy to be creative, I think. Okay. So I don't know. It was just weird. It was just a weird like year. Do you see it bouncing back now? Oh, for sure. Okay. I thought I was actually like getting all up in my head. I was like, I'm never gonna like make money ever again. And it was like, yeah, I'm over. It's done. Yeah. And then literally, as soon as like COVID started ending, everything was fine again. So I was okay. like, okay, fine. fine. All right. Um, with putting yourself out there, I can see that it can be challenging. What's some ways that you take care of yourself so that you don't let the haters and trolls get to you? Because I, I can see I that. I try to. Um, sometimes I'll I'll just start having like panic attacks or like uh, like I'll just go like well, become really stressed out yeah. all of a sudden, 
And I'm like, what's happening? I'm having a breakdown right now. I'm like, oh, when was the last time I took a day off? Oh, it was 20 days ago? Okay, yeah, let me take a day off. Sure, now. yeah. And I'll just, like, put my phone down, and I will not pick it back up until I'm, like, ready, which probably is, like, probably within, like, 24 to 40 hours. Still, taking but, a break. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Like, so, um, like, even this trip, I came out to see you. You yeah. live. You don't live in L.A. No. And this was kind of, like, nice for me. I was, like, able to get away from L.A. Yeah, you wanted a break. And just, just, like, come like not yeah. using my phone all the time. Right. Um, just like ha- taking weekends, you know, just treating it like a real job has been helpful for me, even though some okay. days I have so much on my plate that I'm working like 18 hour days. Yeah. But like, that's like any job. Sometimes you have a lot on your plate. Yeah. Well, especially to make all the content that you have to make because mm-hmm. you have to constantly stay you have relevant. Deadlines. Yeah. Especially with yeah. advertisers, right? Yeah. Deadlines. That makes, that makes total sense. Where can people find you and find your content and find like more Nathan Byland? Um, you can find me wherever. I'm pretty much on everything. Like, you want to see me on Netflix? Uh, there's you can find me in a few things. You want to find me on SoundCloud? Nathan Pilot. Just type in Nathan Pilot. What are you on Netflix? Um, an influencer documentary. Were you really? Yeah. Okay. Or if you want to What's find the name me of the in, documentary? Do you remember the name? I don't remember. Okay, to be I'll, I'll, it's fine. I think it has it has something to do with influencer. It has that. In the Is title. it in the title? Okay. Or something like okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they interview you about this stuff. Is it kind of like a documentary? Yeah, they were talking yeah. about like influencers. Okay. It was okay. at one of my conferences. Okay. Um, in, That's cool. in Anaheim. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the uh, you can find me at Nathan Pyland. Or the Nathan Pound on Instagram and Twitter, but everything else is Nathan Pie Land, and it's like Land of Math Pie. Okay, it's TikTok, YouTube, uh, Spotify, Spotify, Apple, Apple Music, Music yeah, uh, Snapchat, sort of. Well, my Snapchat's Land of Pie, but I don't really use it. Okay, so that don't so follow Snapchat. me on there because I don't use it. <laughs> um, TikTok, yeah. you've got like 4.2 million people. That's substantial. I know. That's a lot of people. Yeah, that's a, there's there's money in that. It's a whole Absol- oh, absolutely. marketing. Like you just described a lot. That's yeah, crazy. It's yeah, a whole market. I, you know what? So. I, I'm doing this show. I'm putting myself out there. This is sort of my creative outlet because I'm not really like a good artist or anything. But when it comes to getting views and likes, I'm just I'm not so much focusing on that. I'm more just making my content and my mm-hmm. work, my art, and then letting the audience come to me. And then I feel like that's going to be the best way to build a brand. Yeah. And build you know what do you stuff want. that you actually enjoy yeah because then like Cause once that, you get stuck in it then you actually can like keep doing it forever and it won't bother you because it's you all You're of my authentic. friends including myself everything that like happened for us influencer wise i've i haven't met anyone yet that it happened because they're like one day like okay i'm gonna become this really famous influencer let me like start doing this i mean some people it did but for the most part it's something you had been doing your whole life like me i had been doing it since sixth grade when i was 12 and it nothing happened for me until i was 19. yeah and so don't give up yeah don't give up and just have fun with it like you don't need to feel like you like don't put so much time into it where you're gonna get burnt out just to have yeah. fun with it don't treat it like a full-time job even like if someone wants to do youtube youtube's hard like yeah. just do it when you feel like it and and just have fun with it and you'll learn as you go it doesn't need to be perfect you don't need to invest three thousand dollars into a setup like <sighs> just just like have fun with it use what you got and as and if it takes off it takes off it otherwise yeah do you, do you live your life and as it thing? and uh, the more work you put into it the better it'll start doing yeah and things will happen at the appropriate time. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Nathan. Yeah. I had a great time talking to you about um, social media stuff. And hopefully, I mean, you definitely have influenced me on being an influencer because I I learned a lot. I did not know any of this stuff. So this was pretty cool. So uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode of The Bear Share Show. The Bear Share Show. The Bear Share Show. What did I say? The The Bear Share Show. When is, things are better when you share. Yeah. Well, Andre we'll, I'll out edit there. It. Yeah, I will Bear Share. Um, but yeah, if you want to find out more about The Bear Share Show, you can uh, email me at thebearshareshow at gmail.com. You can follow The Bear Share Show on Spotify, uh, Apple Music, or wherever else you listen to podcasts. And then also feel free to follow me at The Bear Share Show. Uh, uh, on Instagram as well. So thank you, everybody, and I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Yes, get influenced. Get influenced. All right, bye. Thanks.